playing with fire. Is your holiday home dodging the law? Pretty awful. Why our favorite flowers may be hiding a nasty smell. And pub grub is homemade, just factory fresh. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Fair's Fair. As you can see, we've gone west, literally, to the Isles of Scilly to bring you a very special holiday and leisure edition of the program. I'm on the largest island, St Mary's. And I'm on Tresco, which some people say is the prettiest of the islands. Throughout the Scillies, the 2,000 or so inhabitants and the thousands of tourists every year enjoy unspoilt scenery and a mild and rather un-British sort of climate. Mind you, they do have their fair share of rain. Well, fortunately, the weather has uh, spared us today. In fact, it's positively shining upon us. Wonderfully sunny and peaceful, too. You won't find uh, many of the normal tourist developments here, such as traffic jams and great big hotels. St Mary's and all the Isles of Scilly rely largely upon small bed and breakfast businesses for their holiday accommodation. And of course, B&Bs are a mainstay of tourism throughout the mainland West Country. But as Alison Griffiths found out, different rules apply to different establishments and that can mean holiday risks for you and your family. In a few weeks, the currently peaceful Cornish resort of Newquay will be transformed as thousands of people head for the West Country for their annual break. Many will stay at a bed and breakfast in blissful ignorance of the fact that some could be flouting the law and possibly putting their families' lives at risk. That's the claim made by registered guest house owners who are facing cutthroat competition from what they call pirates. That is, I think we ought to find enough money for that to be done because we owe it to the safety of our customers and their families when they come on holiday. And for the government to just bring in a cut-off point and say that it's quite all right for you to burn six guests overnight, if you wish, without any punishment. Yet seven guests, if you burn them, you're a criminal. It doesn't make any sense at all. And money should not come into the equation when we're talking about the safety of people's lives. Well, strong words there from the West Country Tourist Board and the subject he evidently feels passionate about. Well, joining me now is Julia Day of the Isles of City Tourism Association. Well, now, the majority of accommodation here is bed and breakfast. So how do you police high standards here? Well, obviously, in a community as small as ours, it's very easy to keep tabs on what people are doing. Um, all our accommodation that goes into the official guide is inspected, and we don't have the sort of problems that they have on the mainland. And how are lettings organised? We have a central tourist information office, um, and they put together the official guide for the Isles of Scilly. Um, all the accommodation that goes into that has gone through an inspection scheme. They also run an accommodation list so that at any point during the year people can phone in and they will be told who has vacancies and for how long. It makes it a, a one-stop shop for their holiday. Julia Day, thanks very much indeed. Well, some reassuring notes there if you're thinking of staying to B&B &B on the Isles of Scilly. Katie? Well, if you want a little bit of Tresco to call your very own, you might want to ignore the B&Bs and go for a timeshare here at the Tresco estate. Beautiful, isn't it? We've had absolutely no complaints whatsoever about this particular timeshare. However, in the past year, our post bag has been jam-packed with letters from you about timeshares, notably one particular timeshare in Devon. This Plymouth woman fell foul of the timeshare trap. Tempted by the offer of free satellite television, Penny Mabin and her husband went to a presentation at the Woodford Bridge Hotel, a timeshare complex in North Devon. Well, naturally enough, these Fair's Fair special assignments tend to make us a bit thirsty. So, Katie, what will you be having? Make mine a gin and tonic, please, Richard. Mind you, better not pour that tonic yet until I hop on the boat to get back. OK, Katie, we'll put a gin and tonic behind the bar for you. Meanwhile, thank goodness, I've got a pint of bitter underway at last. And if you're looking for something to soak up your aisles of silly tipple when you're here, well, you couldn't do much better than this steak pie, which is freshly cooked on the premises, which is an awful lot more than you can say for a lot of pubs, which advertise themselves as having home-cooked food. This is a terribly simple dish. It's an Italian dish, actually. A fillet of fish cooked with fresh tomatoes and a sauce of basil and garlic. So simple. And that should give us all food for thought. Well, Jan's here now and she's brought the crisps and a tale of big money that isn't quite all it seems. Walker's Crisps are Britain's biggest crunch maker and recently they've been running a promotion in which the lucky winner finds a big money note inside the packet. If they're that lucky, all they have to do is send the note to Walker's who will then exchange it 
for the real thing, real money. The problem is, though, that the notes look extraordinarily like this. And this one, you've guessed it, came from a Monopoly set. So, <laughs> what are the problems coming out of this promotion? Well, people have sent in what they say was winning money, which they found in the blue sachet, to be, to be told by walkers that what they've sent in is bogus money. In other words, money that's simply come from a Monopoly set rather than from the real thing, from the promotion. And we've had on Fair's Fair several people who've complained about this. One in particular really convinced me. Little 11-year-old called Ryan Jewell and his mum explained to me exactly what happened. Ryan was in the high street. He'd bought a packet of crisps, opened it up, opened the blue sachet, found the £500 note, sent it in only to get a letter, burst into tears when he was told it was bogus and he hadn't won after all. I mean, let's have a look in this one, see whether we've got anything here. Quite honestly, it sounds like a silly promotion. Well, I have to say, I think it was ill-advised in that they used Monopoly money, which anyone could find. Maybe and you can't I think... get in there. <laughs> now, walkers have said to me, and I must give them credit, they say their security is absolutely stringent, that there's no way anyone could have, for example, in the factory, played a practical joke and put bogus Monopoly money in their packets. So we're rather left in a quandary. We don't quite know whether or not, you know, it's just a lot of people trying to pull a fast one on walkers or whether there may have been a slip up in the distribution. Thanks very much, Jam. OK, Katie, you better examine your packet already sorted very closely when you get back from Tresco. <laughs> well, I prefer peanuts, actually, Richard. Mind you, why stand in a smoky old pub when you could be surrounded by these beautiful flowers all over Tresco and the rest of the Sillies? In fact, the Islands of Scilly are some of the biggest flower producers in the whole country. Now, I'm in the exotic Abbey Gardens. Now, Mike Nellums, you're the head gardener. I tell you what, half of these plants and flowers I can't recognise. Well, we're very lucky. You won't see most of these plants growing anywhere outside in Britain at all. They're plants from South Africa, the Canary Islands, Mexico, Australia and they do very well here all the year round outside. Presumably that's because of the climate, is it? Well, yes, the main thing is here, it doesn't get very cold in the winter and we get just the right amount of rainfall when we do need it. Well, there may be a special climate on the Isles of Scilly, but in the rest of Britain we can't grow flowers all the year round because of the climate. So we do have to import some of the most popular blooms. Now, unfortunately, some of them hide the stench of human suffering. <laughs> Oh seven three six six oh four oh one. Well, I'm leaving Tresco now. I'm heading back for that gin and tonic that's supposed to be waiting for me. Apparently, Jan and Richard have dragged themselves out of the pub. They're going to go and wait for me at the quayside. Okay. Well, while we're waiting for Katie to join us, Jan and I are taking a walk around St Mary's Harbour, where the steamer, the Salonian, just behind us, will bring you for the mainland, taking a couple of hours. But if you want to get here a bit faster, you can come by helicopter from Penzance and there's a sky bus service too. But of course, holidays aren't all about travel arrangements, are they? I mean, what happens, for example, if the company you book with goes bust? Well, you should get your money back if the company is properly bonded. But beware, Jan has a warning. That's right. We've done a survey jointly with Somerset Trading Standards and we found that 20% of holiday establishments are not following the new rules which say that they must be bonded. In other words, they must have taken steps to protect customers' money. And that means that an awful lot of people who are booking the types of holidays we do a lot of down here in the West Country are simply not protected if those establishments go bust. Now, the rules say they don't actually apply to simple hotels if you just come for accommodation, but they say if it's a two-part package, in other words, if you're offering accommodation and something else, and something else could be, for example, bird watching on the Silly Isles, it could be horse riding, trekking, anything like that, if it's a two-part package, if there's two elements to it, they must protect holiday money. Well, that's amazing. I mean, how does somebody guard against this? Well, the only way is to actually check with the holiday company when you book and say, are you bonded and how are you bonded? To actually winkle it out of them, that they have taken those steps. Because, as I say, many people, either through ignorance, through just not realising this new law is in, in place, are simply ignoring the rules. Thanks very much indeed, Jan. And look, the boat from Tresco has just arrived. Look who's on board. You're Hello, welcome you to St Mary's. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed. Hey, I'm still waiting for my drink. But anyway, that's about it from all of us here on the Isles of Scilly. We're going to take a summer break. We'll be back in September with more consumer investigations from the West Country. And don't forget, all the details are on page 631 of Teletext. 
So from Jan, Katie, and from me, bye-bye, and have a wonderful summer.